Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Captain Creativity. I am your host, David Merrill, and we are here at Rapid TCT in Detroit, where all the biggest 3D printing manufacturers are here, well, almost all of them, and they are here to show us their latest and greatest. Today, we're gonna go through all the new unveils here at the show, right after this. Welcome to the show that sets your mind free. Tech and gadgets. 3D surprise. We're here with some new releases from Creality, and that is the K2, the regular K2, as well as the K2 Pro. Now, we already are familiar with the K2 Plus, which sports a 350 by 350 by 350 millimeter bedside. These are basically their little brothers. They took everything that worked in K2, they perfected it. We now know that the firmware and the extruder and everything has all been stabilized and the K2 is naturally the next progression beyond the K1 series. So welcome to K2. The regular K2 is 260 by 260 by 260. That's about four millimeters larger than you know who. But ultimately, the K2 is essentially like the K2 Plus, just a smaller build size. Now, if you want a little bit bigger, you want to go in that medium section, you have the K2 Pro. And the K2 Pro is 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters. Both of them are going to be able to work with the CFS right out of the box. So it, unlike the K1 series where you have to do the upgrade kit, well, that's not gonna be necessary anymore. So essentially, if you're looking for a Core XY machine and you want that multicolor capability from Creality, the K2 is the next thing in line. Now, we don't know anything about the pricing. Apparently later today, we're gonna find out when they're gonna announce that pricing. Maybe they'll even announce the release date. Who knows? But right now, a lot of stuff is really hush-hush. I don't have anything more for you. <laughs> Something else here at the Creality booth that people have been dying for in terms of dryers is finally a dual heated chamber. So with the Creality Space Pi, we have two heated chambers and that will allow you to dry both TPU and PLA at the same time. As you can see over here, two rolls of filament can go in this chamber, two rolls of filament can go in this chamber, and basically you have an LCD screen where you can easily set what you want this chamber to dry out and what you want this chamber to dry out. Regarding the Space Pi, I do know that the price point is somewhere around the $200 mark. So this is one of the things that people have been asking for the most when it comes to dryers and Creality is the first to deliver. So we did hear some release dates for these printers. The K2 Pro is supposed to come out first and that's gonna come out around May. And then you have the regular K2 and that's gonna be coming out in June. Okay, so back at the Creality booth, we also have the Halo X1, and this is currently right now a Kickstarter. As you can see over here, it looks very entry and beginner friendly with a nice LCD screen right on the top. As you can see, the lid comes up just like that, which is really cool, and it sports a build volume of 211, 118, and 200 millimeter build size. Now, this is a 16K resolution resin printer. You're gonna need a curing and a washing station. But something that's also very interesting about this unit is the fact that they have an easy release system. If you go like this, you can see you can actually release, just push off your print. So that is really nice to be able to like get your prints off the bed. This is a big, you know, people have tried to attack that problem in a multitude of different ways. Some have used magnetic, but then they felt that it didn't adhere to the bed very well. This is a very interesting way to try to knock off those prints without scraping it and damaging your bed. Now, another really cool thing about this is it's not here anymore. It used to be here. 
<laughs> but there was a auto feeding uh, resin solution that will actually feed the resin automatically into here. And it seems to also not only feed it in, but it also feed out. So it looks like it will actually bring the resin that you're not using anymore back into the bottle, which is really, really cool. So we know the price, it's gonna be about $599 to purchase it now. And they say that they'll start shipping it in about a month from now, which is pretty good. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, I did find out that the auto feed unit is an accessory. And so you would buy that separately. They said it, it sold for about $130, I think roughly. And that is the unit that would be sitting on the side that would automatically feed and also take out the resin. Another really cool thing about the Halo X1 is basically they're changing the whole way that resin printing is being done. Kind of similar to Core XY printers, essentially what ends up happening is the vat meets the bed instead of the bed meeting the vat. And they say that this is gonna actually improve the quality and the reliability of the prints. Well, we know that in Core XY world, reversing it around from Bed Slinger to Core XY actually improved things. So maybe there's some truth to this. And I can't imagine that they put that in for no reason. So, but I think that that's really an, a very fresh, interesting take about bringing this whole thing up to the bed and keeping the bed constantly stationary. So that is a really cool thing. Now keep in mind going forward, you're gonna start hearing more of PO Create. PO Create is a subsidiary of Creality. They're going forward. Creality is gonna focus just on FDM printers and their subsidiary PO Create will be focusing on the resin printers. Anyway, very excited. I can't wait to see what this does. All right, so we're here at the FL Sun booth and they're unveiling the FL Sun T1 Max. Now, we've recently seen me do a review on the T1. The T1 was the fastest 3D printer I've ever gotten to use and it worked out great for me. Now, the T1 Max is now coming out in about two to three weeks. And I think a couple of major things to talk about is the fact that this is gonna be a larger build size than the T1. Amazingly, the chassis looks almost identical. And that actually makes sense because if you look closely into the T1, you'll notice that there was more room to go in there for a larger build size. And that's exactly what they did. They ended up creating a larger build size on the bottom there. And you can see this build size is 300 by 297 millimeters. Now, the price point is gonna be somewhere around $400, which is insane. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know how these companies sometimes make money on selling printers that cheap, but wow, that is impressive. And one of the most impressive things about the T1 Max is, first of all, notice, the doors are gone. They really wanted to showcase here how quiet these machines are. Obviously, in the previous versions, one of the biggest complaints that consumers had was the noise. Certainly on the S1, a little bit on the T1, but here on the T1 Max, they put in some sort of like silencer and the noise is really, really low. So even without the glass door, the sound is something like around 40 decibels. And that's amazing. But yes, normally you put the glass doors on, but we're here standing right next to it and this thing is super quiet so that was a major add-on so now you're going to get the same insanely fast speed it's going to be quieter and it's at a ridiculous price point i'm very excited about this one <laughs> so we're here at the elegoo booth and we're looking here at their latest resin printer the jupiter 2. the jupiter 2 is one of their largest resin printers that they've ever released. Their bed size or the size of the vat is 302 by 161.98, I guess 162 by 300 millimeters. That is huge. As you can see over here, the doors open up. And one of the really cool things about this is the fact that again, like many of their recent resin printers, there's all that auto calibration. You can really just get going right away. Now to release the plate, it's very easy. One thing that they did do for experts who wanna fine tune every little piece of like Z homing and everything or Z calibration is right over here comes out 
these adjusting screws. You don't have to do it, but if you're that kind of, you, just, you want a little bit more, you want to do that fine tuning, they thought of you right there. So anyway, you put it right back in like so, and then you close it down and that's it. Now, another thing that they did, which is really, really amazing is, you know, when sometimes you have to replace the film on the bottom of the vat, so you have those screws. Well, what they did was really, really cool. Over here, let me see if I could pull this thing out. If you take a look over here, you'll notice that there are no more screws to screw in the plastic. Instead, they made maintenance super easy. They have these clips here, and I'm not gonna open all of it because I don't wanna ruin their printer, um, but you open up these clips here, and you could just put in that film and you don't have to worry about those screws on the bottom anymore. So it makes the process of replacing that film a cinch. So I thought that was really, really cool. Now, another thing that's in here is a camera so you can monitor your print, which is great. And then over here in the corner here, this is the, th this is the thing that I'm the most excited about. Feeding resin into the vat is nothing new, but one of the things I really love about this machine is that it sucks the resin when you're done. Now, you're not gonna get all of it. You're gonna get most of it. You, you know, there's gonna be a little bit left in there, but you're gonna be able to recycle that unused resin right onto the back of the unit. And right on the back here holds your resin. And there's a tube that comes right down into there. Another thing I wanna tell you though, about the Jupiter 2 is, as you may know, this company has done something really miraculous when it comes to separating the print from the vat. They had this tilting action that really kind of helped separate the piece off the, uh, off the vat. I do want you to know that on this version, that's not in there. It's not the end of the world. Remember, everybody essentially does this on all the resin printers. But on this version, because they have that recycling capability. It just wasn't in this version. But that's not to say it's not gonna be on, I don't know, the Jupiter 3, the Jupiter S2 SE, who knows? I'm sure it's gonna come back in the future. But on this version, it's not there. And from what I'm told, it's okay because the prints come out amazing. And I've seen these prints, they look fantastic. So I'm really excited about this. Now, in terms of price and release date. So the price, we don't know. <laughs> but the release date for the Jupiter 2, it's actually in Q3 2025. Now, another really cool thing about this Jupiter 2 is that it's got a 16K resolution. You're gonna get insane quality out of this printer. But remember, your model has to have that quality to see that quality. But just look at how amazing these, these prints came out. Let's see if I can zoom that in. Look at that. Just look at, look at that quality. Look at that resolution, the detail, beautiful. Look how much you can print in one shot. And, the, and these little figurines, everything is there. All their little swords, all that little detail right there for you. Beautiful. Anyway, check it out. Be on the lookout for it. Another awesome printer from Elegant. So I'm here at the Flash Forge booth and they've been actually producing some amazing printers at insane budget pricing. I'm here now with the AD5X which is going to be priced at around $399 or just under $400. But what's impressive about this Core XY unit is that it comes standard with the multicolor filament system. And there's also that brilliance of how they loaded those elements in there. You know, when you look at something like the AMS light and some other multicolor systems, it just takes up all this extra space, sometimes to the right, sometimes to the left, sometimes on top. But here they intelligently loaded up the four rolls of filament right here on this size, which is really fantastic if you have a print farm or just in general, if you're trying to save space. Now for $399, that is a lot of printer for such a small price. It has all the calibration capabilities that you would expect. Input shaping, bed meshing, D-axis calibration, all that stuff is in here. And the build size on this is about 220 by 220 
by 220. So this is actually available now for purchase. And now we're gonna move on to the Guider 4. All right, so here we are with the Guider 4, and this thing is gonna go for about $700. Again, it's gonna come standard with the multicolor filament system, which is really awesome. And once again, they intelligently put the four rolls of filament on the side of the unit. The difference on this guy is that the build size is a little bit bigger. And this build size is, if I'm not mistaken, yep, 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters. That's a pretty impressive build size for that kind of price, including the multicolor system. And again, same kind of calibration capabilities that you would have seen on the other printer that we just looked at. And then the next one that they have is the Guider 4 Pro. So the Guider 4 Pro is basically just like the Guider 4, but this guy is meant to handle those tougher filaments like ABS and ASA. It has a heated chamber and this sports a price tag of just under $1,999. However, it does not come included with the multicolor system but you can upgrade to it for the cost of just another $150. So for $1,150, you get a fully enclosed 300 by 300 by 300 millimeter build size. Again, with all the auto calibration capabilities, multicolor system, all for $1,150. That is pretty good price. I've been hearing a lot of great things about FlashForge, and if you're just starting out in the 3D printing space, Given the price, given the quality, given the capabilities, it's definitely worth a look. All right, so I've actually been told that there's a new Kickstarter from Flashforge, and it is the CJ270. Now, this printer is not your standard FDM printer. It's actually printing in resin, but full color capability. And that will give you prints like this, like that, or like that. So on Kickstarter right now, you could back this desktop printer for about $3,000, but if you don't back it, it's going to charge you something around five to 6,000. And yes, that sounds expensive, but keep in mind, you're now able to produce these total full color prints and they're, they're pretty sturdy. I mean, as he mentioned, it's resin, so you're gonna get super high definition, super high quality. And in terms of the build size, because that's important to know, is that printer is gonna be about 180 by 120 by 100 millimeters. So I've just been told that in Q3 of 2025, these printers are gonna start shipping out to their backers. So that's pretty exciting. Again, not for everybody, but very, very cool capability of what's down the road. And if companies are gonna keep getting into this space, I imagine the price point is gonna come down at some point. Anyway, very cool. Anyway, I had a great time at Rapid TCT in Detroit, and I'm absolutely looking forward to next year. There were so many incredible innovations on display that we couldn't cover everything in just one video. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes where I'll be diving deeper into some awesome tech I discovered, including the Bamboo Lab Cyberbrick and the exciting Auto Eject MK1 from Automate that automatically ejects your prints and loads new print beds perfect for 24 seven printing. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy printing.